hey, I had a friend of mine go ahead and uh, pick the background colors for this, so we'll see what happens when we get started. And we are talking about rounding numbers. Pretty clever, the circle of the numbers. All right, we're going to be rounding numbers in this lesson. First off, I want to name some of the placeholders. What I have here is some numbers, 1 through 7, and each of them represents a different place. Let's start here. Normally, when we write a number, if it has a single digit, we call that the ones column. That's how many ones are there. In this case, there are four ones. This is the tens column, so three tens or 30. Right? We could have any number there between any digit there between 1 and 9 or 0 that would represent the number of tens we have. This is the number of hundreds that we have, and this is the number of thousands. So we have 1,230, which is three tens and four ones. Once we put a decimal in, we start working on tenths and hundredths and thousandths with the TH there that's um, hard to say in a microphone without me just blowing on the thing. So there are five tenths, six hundredths, and then seven thousandths on this number that I have here. You're going to need to know that for when we start rounding, but for now, just um, put that information kind of in your back pocket. And let's talk, wow, this is weird. Let's talk about rounding. Um, wow, that's an interesting background. I'm going to have to talk to my friend about this. That's kind of weird. All right, so is 21 closer to 20 or to 30? I put a scale here so we could look at it. If 20's here and 30's here, 21 is much closer to 20. So because it's closer to 20, if we were rounding, we would say it is about 20. It's closer to 20, it's about 20. All right? If it were over here like 29, then that would be closer to 30, so we'd say it's about 30. But with this one, 21, we say it's about 20. We know that 21 falls between 20 and 30, and so we can pick the closer number. There's one exception to this rule, and that's when you get a 20, 30, and the number in between is 25. It's kind of hard to read with this background. Um, so 25 is right dead center of this little teeter-totter seesaw thing, and whenever it's in the middle, we round up. So if it's 25, we would say we round that up and say it's about 30. All right. The only case that that happens is when it's a 5, in between two numbers, like 25, we don't know which side it's closer to, so we round up. Wow, that's like pumpkin orange. All right, so just going to set some parameters for when we are rounding. Usually when you get a question, it'll tell you how much you're going to round it. So when we begin to ask questions, you'll often see this. Round the number 195 to the nearest 100. So it's telling you which placeholder. Remember, this is the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. So if we're rounding to the nearest hundred, we have to first decide 195 is between what two hundreds? It's between 100 and 200. So because 195 is between 100 and 200, we have to try and figure out which one it's closer to. It's much closer to 200. So again, we would say for our final answer, if we're rounding 195 to the nearest 100, we would say it is about 200. For our purposes, we'd say about 200. Oh, man, it's like a wave of, of brown, green chocolate or something. All right, so let's go ahead and, and solve one here. If you round 149 to the nearest 10, that means we look at the tens column and say, what values is this between? What tens value is that between? So it's between 140 and 150. Those are the different tens that this is between, the 40 and 50. The 100 is going to be the same both ways, because we're not, we're not changing the 100s. We're changing the tens. We're rounding to the nearest 10. So it's between 140 and 150. And 149 is closer to 150. So we would say it's about 150. If we were rounding 149, we'd say it's about 150. Well, that's different. All right, let's look at some decimals. If we're rounding 
to the nearest hundredths, we have to look at this decimal and say, what is the spot that is the hundredth? So I'm going to underline it here in a color that I think will show up. Holy cow. OK. I'm not getting my friend to do the backgrounds again. All right. So there's the hundredth place. So we have to say that three hundredths, or 0 0.03, that's three hundredths, is between three hundredths and four hundredths. It's somewhere in between there. And which one is it closer to? Is this three hundredths, four thousandths, and six ten thousandths? Is that closer to the three hundredths or the four hundredths? So to do that, just like with all other numbers, you have to look at the number just to the right and say, is that less than 5 or greater than 5? In this case, it's a 4, so that's less than 5. So we're going to round that down to being 19 and 23 hundredths. And you can fill in the zeros if you want, but they're not necessary. When we're rounding with decimals, you're usually removing the ones off the end that, that aren't quite as big. They're smaller portions of it. We're rounding to the nearest hundredth. We're just going to be left with two decimal places. So 23 hundredths. And we're not really messing with the 19 or the 10 or the 2 that's in the tenths column. We're just looking at the hundredths column and saying, what's on the right? Is that greater than or less than half that we kind of put it to the higher number or keep it at 3? All right. Wow, that looks like wood. So how can we use this rounding in our actual um, life situations? If you're in a grocery store and you have $10 and you're buying tomato sauce for 93 cents per jar, how many can you buy? So if I were looking at this, I would personally use rounding. I would look at this 93 cents and say, well, that's about a dollar. If I have a dollar, I can buy one of those. So then I, that would make it easier for me. Because if I have $10 in my pocket, I know I can get 10 jars. I can buy 10 jars. And in the grocery store, I'm not looking for I can buy about 10 jars. I know I can actually purchase 10 jars. Um, and I may have some change left over, but that's the number I can purchase. When you're in a grocery store and you're asking for money, you don't round up because then you'll run out of money. But with, with that, you say, how many am I going to buy? I can buy 10. Good. And you're looking for the number that you can actually get. Okay. We are rounding up the cost of the jars, I should say, but we're not rounding up the amount of money that we have. All right. Okay, so let's make math a little bit simple. If I'm multiplying 5.324 times 123.53, and I get the answer 6,576.7372, is that a reasonable answer? Now, um, you may look at this and go, holy cow, there's too many decimals for me to even begin to calculate this. All right, so um, yeah, that looks fine. But if we estimate or we round, we can say 5.324, eh, that's about 5. 123.53, that's about 120. Or we can make our lives even easier, eh, that's about 100. For estimating purposes, and then we can say, well, is 5 times 100 about um, 6,700 or 6,000? 600, you know, like, you can just look at that. Is 5 times 100, will that give me something that's like 6,000? No, that doesn't make any sense. It's, I'm not going to get something that's, that's that big. I'm going to get about 500. So there was probably a decimal error when you plug this into your calculator. That's not a reasonable answer. So estimating is a quick way for me to look at this. 5 times about 100 should be about 500. That's nowhere near 500. So I know that my answer is not reasonable. And that's a way that we can make math simple. All right? We can kind of tone things down and say, is this anywhere near being right? And in this case, absolutely not. Not a reasonable answer. 
our answer should be much less than that. And in this case, I did just misplace the decimal by one. So we, you know, we, when we double check, we'll get the correct answer. All right. So when we round or when we estimate, there is one thing, and that is that our answers are not going to be exact. Just like um, in this previous slide, the exact answer is not 500. It's about that, though. So because the answers aren't exact, we use the term about. We say about this amount. And with our math symbol, we'll use these two squiggly lines. So we're not using an equal sign. We're using an approximately equal to or about sign that looks like this, two squiggly lines. It's called the approximately equal to sign. So you'll see that symbol when you start talking about estimating or rounding. So I guess it's about time to say goodbye. <laughs> Our rounding is done. Have a great day.